White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, whose job it is to answer questions, has been doing anything but that. And if you're a real reporter and if you actually ask tough questions, Jean-Pierre will treat you like you are invisible and she'll simply never call on you. No one knows this better than the most famous reporter from Africa, chief White House correspondent for Today News Africa, Simon Atiba. He hasn't been called on in over four months and was told by Jean-Pierre herself that she will not even meet with him until maybe next year, which we all know is code for never. Why is that? Because Atiba refuses to go unheard. Watch this. She has a valid question. She's asking about the origin of COVID. I hear the question. Dr. Fauci is the best person I, to answer. I that. hear your question, but we're not doing this the way you want it. This is the disrespect of. It is. I'm done. Simon, I'm done. I'm Simon, I'm done. I'm done with you right now. Why is it hard for you to give me a question? It is not hard. I've answered. I've. Would you let me answer the question or are you get. Okay. Okay. I, I'm trying to answer your question. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. I just tried. You wouldn't let me. Go ahead. I just tried and you would not let me, sir. So your colleague is going to ask a question. Go ahead. No, I just. I literally just tried to answer your question. You shut me down. So now your colleague is going to. Let me take the question first. Okay, thanks everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Ooh. Chief White House Correspondent for Today News Africa, Simon Atiba, joins me now. Simon, welcome to the program. So glad to have you in studio tonight. Thank you for having me. Hey, so you're getting a lot of attention right now. The legacy media, they're calling you a, a heckling reporter. But honestly, I think you're just doing your job uh, on behalf of, of people in Africa and just like anybody else in that briefing room. First of all, I got to ask you, what do you make of all this attention that you're getting as a result of that and why people are, are, are so tuned in with what you're doing? First of all, Jen, I'm glad to be here as the voice of Africa in the U.S. and in the White House. Uh, this is a big honor to me. Uh, so um, I'm having a lot of attention now because people begin, pe pe people are beginning to understand the truth. Uh, usually, when you see those sound bites or you know clips on TV, you don't really understand the genesis of the problem. You know, she's not called on me in the past uh, in the past four months. And I've taken the proper step for her to call on me, and she's not done that. And so when I yell out a question, people are surprised, but they don't understand that I've done every single thing that I needed to do for us to avoid. Simon, why, why do you think it is that, that she won't call on you? She, you? she won't take your questions. You have a lot of great questions, but she calls on the same people all the time, gives them multiple questions, but shoots you down when, when you try to ask anything. Yeah, so if you ask her serious questions, she doesn't usually have answers. Mm -hmm. uh, so the way the White House operate is it's the appearance of um, normality, right? So you need to send your questions in advance for you to receive answers. And so send your questions in advance, and I will call on you. Mm -hmm. Don't send your question in advance, and I won't call on you, because you mean danger, because you mean surprise, because uh, you know she doesn't really know what you ask her. And I must say this, last week and this week, that's the first time since Karine Jean-Pierre was appointed that she actually took real questions. Because, you know, the big scandal with the classified document, people cannot send her question in advance because they're afraid that she won't call on them. There, there is a lot of tension in that briefing room now. I, I saw a CNN report, Simon, uh, where reporters in the, in the briefing room were asked about how things are going, and people were saying she's the least effective White House press secretary. These are from some of your fellow, fellow reporters. Another person said the briefings are a painful waste of time. There's a lot that you're dealing with there, and, and the American people see it. Uh, I'm sure the people back in, in Africa see that as well. I want to ask you about a statement that you made uh, that I found really interesting, and you said said this, quote, when I first arrived in the United States, having watched CNN for years, I came to believe that the racists and the bad guys in the U.S. are Republicans, the old white guys with no college degrees who live in the Midwest. But in the Biden White House, as I have struggled to get access, to ask questions, to be treated with the same dignity as others, I came to realize that the Republicans were not the racists and the horrible, awful people I was told they were. Can you elaborate on that? Yes. Yeah, so the, that's what I thought. Uh, most people in Africa were CNN. Mm -hmm. And we read the New York Times. And that's why during the presidential election in 2020, our publication, Today News Africa, actually endorsed President Biden because we were told that President Trump is a racist and we couldn't endorse him. 
But as I began to cover the Biden White House, as I began to realize how I and other African journalists in the Biden White House, who is supposed to stand for the little guy, how we were being treated, how we were being discriminated against. Let me ask you a question. If you are the press secretary of a president who is hosting all the African president in Washington, D.C., like during the U.S.-Africa summit, won't it occur to you to give at least one question to the people who come from that continent? And she failed to do that. I couldn't believe it. During the U.S.-Africa summit in December, President Biden received 50 African heads of state, and she couldn't even give us even one question. And I believe that she should be ashamed of herself. She's black, I'm black, and I couldn't believe that a black person is doing that to me. I mean, if it were a white person, we would have accused her of racism. But she's black like me, she's an immigrant, and she has treated me and other African journalists the same way, which is, which is a shame. She's trying to change now, trying to give questions to the other Africans yeah. so that, you know, check that box. It's, it's unfortunate, Simon, but we are so grateful for you coming here, telling your story and, you know, talk, talking to fellow Americans about what's happening in that room because they see it. And we appreciate you being so open and honest about that. I don't have a lot of time left, but I want to point out uh, there was a time briefly when you and I were in that briefing room together. I was a White House correspondent during the Trump administration. And I think back to those days, uh, I think we have some footage of it there and how different it was because every reporter in the room, regardless of where their political lean was, they got a question and they got called on. And sometimes it wasn't so friendly, uh, but everybody, everybody got a question. Do you think that perhaps this administration could learn something from the previous administration in that regard and giving that equal time to, to the press to get, their, get the message out there? I wasn't there regularly when President Trump was in office. But the few times that I came, I had access. During the Biden administration, in the past two years, I've been allowed to attend only one press conference. And that particular press conference was because President Biden was celebrating the midterm election. And so I covered the White House in the Biden administration, and I'm not allowed to attend press briefings, even when President Biden is receiving 50 African leaders in Washington, D.C. That alone tells you everything. When I talk to other journalists who were there every day when President Trump was in power, what they report to me is there was more access during President Trump, even though there was a contentious relationship between President right. Trump you right. know, and, and the media. But there was more access. People have access. People don't have access. This week, the White House Correspondent Association president sent a letter to uh, Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre to mm -hmm. call on people from across the room. Well, Simon, which is, which you know, is, yeah. we have to leave it there, but I hope that you getting this attention uh, leads the White House to ask, letting you ask more questions, getting more questions in from all reporters in the room, because everybody in that room uh, should be heard. Simon Ativa, we appreciate you being here. Please come back soon. We'll love to have you here on Prime News. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. Your retirement funds are being threatened with even more losses from record inflation, recession, and skyrocketing interest rates. Fortunately, the highly trained specialists at American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. If you call them right now, it's a special offer. They will give you a free gold coin on your first qualifying order, so don't wait. Call 866-935-4309. That's 866-935-4309 or text Newsmax to 65532. That's Newsmax to 65532.